Hey friends, welcome back to another week of January's Number Corner. Today is day six of January for Number Corner purposes, but it is January the 11th, 2021. It's still kind of weird for me to say 2021, but I'm so excited that we made it to another year and we're hopeful for bigger and better things to happen this year. As you may remember, you do have a number corner checkup this month, and the checkup is kind of like an overarching checkup to see if you're learning things during number corner. And you may see some of these questions that we're learning about now on your actual Bridges assessments if you're using the Bridges curriculum. So you make sure you want to make sure you're paying attention. Besides that, these strategies that we're using are really helpful for solving problems. So let's get started with our assignment today which is to quickly update our calendar grid, update our calendar collector, and then we're gonna do a problem string, okay? So, like I said, it is December the 11th, so you probably see what it looks like behind me, but I also wanted to show you what the 9th and 10th looked like. Now we have a funky looking shape here, so let's get a closer look. All right, so we know the 7th was a triangle, triangle. What do we call this thing here? These two shapes for the weekend. What's that called? We know it has four sides. I'll tell you, it's not a parallelogram because in a parallelogram, you have two, um, both sets are parallel. And this right here is not parallel to this side right here. So what could it be? Did you say trapezoid? You are absolutely correct. It is a trapezoid. So if today's a trapezoid, the ninth, not today, the ninth, then that means the 10th is also a trapezoid. Now we gotta figure out, well, what is the area? Hmm, that half of a, um, half here, half there, that's one hole, and then another half here. So our area is one and a half square units. All right, let's look at the area for our next um, trapezoid. Got a hole here, hole here, hole here. So that's three holes. And then we have a half and a half. That's four. Half and a half, five, a half and a half. So our area here is six. Six square units. Let's look at today's. What is this shape? Let's see how many sides it has. One, two, three, four, five sides, which means it should be a, right, it is a pentagon. Let's figure out our area. Half, half, half. A half plus a half plus a half. They give us a three halves, or I could say one and a half square units, perfect. So that's our calendar grid for today. Now let's think about our calendar collector. We are collecting four, or excuse me, three quarters a day. Today's the sixth day for number quarter in January. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And I have already added our sixth day. You see that here in yellow since we're updating this very quickly. And we know in order to figure out the number of quarters, we can multiply the day for number corner times three because every day we're collecting three quarters. So it's the sixth day of number corner times three would give us 18 total quarters. Okay, so here's our fraction of a dollar, 18 fourths. I want you to think really quickly, how can we figure out how much money that is? Before we think about how much money that is though, let's simplify this fraction. 18 fourths is like saying 18 divided by four. So let's count by fours. Four, eight, 12. We know four times four is 16. So that means I'd have four, and then I'd have two quarters left over. That may help us figure out how much money we have. Four and two fourths, which is four and a half, means I have four dollars, and then two quarters out of the next dollar, or half of a dollar, which is how much money? 50 cents. So, so far we have 
$4.50. Do you have $4.50? Hmm, maybe you do. You may have gotten some money for Christmas. Okay, let's keep it moving. Now we have our problem string. So while I get set up, I want you to get out your number corner um, notebooks and open up and label it problem string 14, right? Okay, I'm ready. Are you? Sure hope so. So today we're gonna do some more work with division strategies, okay? So we wanna think about our context today as possibly me measuring the area of a piece of paper. So let's start with our first question. 14 times 10. So you have a piece of paper that's 14 inches long and 10 inches wide. What is the total area of the piece of paper? This one should be very easy, but just like last time where representation mattered, I want you to draw a picture of this. And the um, problem itself is kind of making you think in terms of shapes possibly a rectangle since it's a piece of paper and we know it's not a square because the side lengths are not the same. So maybe you should draw a square or excuse me, a rectangle. And that's what I'm gonna draw. All right, so here is my rectangle. Hopefully you're drawing yours in your notebook. We have one side length of 10 and the other side length, which is 14 inches. And we wanna know the area. So we're finding how much space is inside of this shape. So how much space is inside? Right, 140. 14 times 10 is 140. And I might be able, able to make this a little bit more um, proportionate. I'm gonna do that very quickly because being precise in mathematics is very important. So I'm gonna do that. All right, I have fixed my picture. We have exactly 14 going down and 10 going across, which makes it very clear to see that we have 140 little tiny squares inside of this piece of paper. So let's move on to the next question. 140 divided by 10. Hmm. I want to cut a piece of paper that had the same area as the first, which was 140 square inches. If one side is 10 inches long, how, must, how long must the other side be? Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you know the other side because here we have it represented already. However, if you didn't know the answer to this question, maybe because it wasn't given in the form of a problem string, but you just had to solve a computation problem that had nothing surrounding it and you just needed to know or needed to find a strategy to figure it out. What you could do is use what you know. What do we know about any times 10? Our favorite, or at least, um, one of the problems that I would always hear students talk about when they're first learning multiplication is they say, I know 10 times 10. Y'all remember saying stuff like that? Yeah. Well, if you know 10 times 10, that's using what you know. So I could highlight or I could separate my um, shape here. And I know that this is a 10 by 10, which is 100. Because let's just pretend we already we didn't know this side length. Some of you did because you recognize the relationship, which is great. But if you didn't, then I'm showing you a strategy that you could use to figure it out. So we know a 10 by 10 is 100, but we need 40 more in order to um, make this space 140 square inches. So what times 10 is 40? Great. Four times 10 is 40. So now, what's my other side length? 10 plus four. Full side length is 14. So we still get the same answer as before, but this time we use what we knew um, about our facts 
instead of using a previous problem and understanding the relationship. Okay, so let's keep moving. This time, I have 140 divided by 14. Since I wanted to cut a piece of paper that is the same area as the others, 140 square inches. If one side is 14 inches long, how long must the other side be? So, we kind of already done that, right? Do you see the relationship though? So here, just to spell it out a little bit more, here we already have our 14. We have our 140 inside here. And we were looking for the unknown side length, which in this case is 10. And we know because of the inverse relationship between multiplication and division and our understanding of fact families, 14 times 10 is 140. 10 times 14 is 140. 140 divided by 10 is 14. So 140 divided by 14 must be 10 because 10 times 14 is 140. This area model is the perfect representation to display exactly what I just said. When you are multiplying two side lengths and you're finding the area, the answer is all the space that's taken up inside of this shape. When you're dividing though, you know the dividend, which is the number you're dividing. You take your whole, which is inside of this shape for this problem, and you may know one of the side lengths, one of the divisors, or the divisor, and you're trying to find that unknown, which is going to be your quotient. And the quotient is the answer to a division problem. Let's continue and let's see if we have some more interesting problems to work out in this problem stream. Hmm, Ooh. 70 divided by 14. I want to cut a piece of paper that had an area of 70 square inches instead of 140. If one side is 14 inches long, how long must the other side be? So I want you to take a moment and try to work this problem out. Remember, representation matters, so represent the picture. One thing you could do is go ahead and um, show your side length of 14 because we've done that already. And we know we need 70 in instead of 140. So maybe you think, how is 70 related to 140? Then take a moment and think about it. Great. So if you hadn't paused this video and you're still working, go ahead and pause it. If you have finished working, that's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and um, show my side length of 14. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And I know that I need 70. Okay, so I'm going to pretend as if I don't understand the relationship between 70 and 140. And I'm just trying to work this problem out using a strategy and that strategy is going to be i know that 14 is the same as 10 and 4. okay and i know that i want 70 but i can't do 7 this way because then my shape is gonna look not like 14 it would be 7 times 10 and that's not what i have i have 14 as one of my um, factors. So I need something times 14. So maybe I think about, hmm, instead of doing 10 times 7, I could do 10 times 6. So it's more like the guess and check method. So 10 times 6 would be 60, and I would need 10 more. But is there anything times 4 that would give me 10? No. So maybe I do 5. Maybe I do 10 times 5. Um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I know 10 times 5 is 50. So here's my 50 right here. And I need 20 more. What times 4 would give me 20? Yeah, it's, it works. So what's my side length? What's my quotient? The answer to this division problem. The answer is 5. Now, if you thought about the, um, the relationship between 
70 and 140, maybe you realize that 70 is half of 140. So instead of having this whole space, I had to cut this bad boy in half, which is what I did in my representation down here. And hopefully you followed. So I used a guess and check method using what I know about factors, factor pairs. Let's look at the next one. 14 times 15. Ooh. Cut a piece of paper to 14 inches by 15 is the total area. Hmm, let's see here. Go ahead and draw this out in your notebook and see if you can identify the area. If you have not paused this video and you're still working, please do so at this time. I am merely going to um, redraw my last um, problem just to give me space for this next one, okay? Okay. Great. So, what did you get for your uh, area of 14 times 15? Wait, didn't we already figure out um, 14 times 5? We kind of did, right? Because 14 times 5 was 70. Remember, this was 50, and this was 20. But I want 14 times 15. So in order to make my side length 15, I need to add 10 more to it. So I'm going to add 10 more in a different color. Let's add 10 here, 10, 4, 6, 8. I think I have 10. Perfect. I'm going to add 10 here. And what do we know about 10 times 14? We just solved it earlier on our problem stream. Great, 10 times 14 was 140. So in order to find the total area of this whole shape, which is a 14 by 15. You'll see that, this whole side lane, even though I changed my colors. Okay, so that means I need to add 140 plus 70, and what am I going to get? Good, I'm going to get 210. So my area is 210 square units. We're going to push through these last two just to talk about, again, the connection um, since our focus today is on division strategies, okay? This is 210 divided by 14. Well, we just solved for 210. Um, well, we saw 14 times 15, which was 210. So we know this whole space right here is worth 210. And I know one of my side lengths is 14. If we recognize the relationship, we could easily say, oh, the answer is 15, which the answer indeed is 15. But if we don't know, we can use what we do know, which would be, um, we could say... 10 times 10, we could start with 10 times 10, which is 100. We could even start with 10 times 12, which is 120, or um, 10 times um, 15, which is 150. And we could represent our area and then figure out what's left over. For the sake of time, I'm not gonna show you the guess and check method with this problem. But if you have time, I would love for you to try it out. We'll see how you can use what you know about 14 to figure out 
how to create an area of 210. I do want to take this last few moments to talk about this last problem, which is 224 divided by 14. Um, I am going to erase what I have here because I know my total area for this picture is 210. I know I already have one side length of 14 and I'm trying to figure out this other side length. But I need to add something to it. And I'm going to add something to it. I guess I'll choose a different color just to, so you can really see. I already have, oops, um, I already have this together is 210. Remember that? How much more do I need to add to get me to 224? I need to add another 14. So if I know this side length is 14 and I need to add 14, then technically I just need to add 14 like this, which adds what to this side length? So I'm adding one. So what is 224 divided by 14? 16, because 16 times 14 is 224. All right, I know we kind of went through that last part really quickly. Um, and hopefully you were able to follow along with me. If you need more help, please um, feel free to reach out to your teacher um, and let her know that you need more assistance with this. And I'm sure as we continue with Member Corner for the remainder of the month, we may hit on some of these strategies again. Until then, you guys have a great afternoon, and I will see you tomorrow.